right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Felipe Zamana, who is all the way over in Porto in Portugal. How are you doing, Felipe? I'm fine, John, and you? Excellent, excellent. And Philippe is a creativity professor, researcher, speaker, and strategic advisor dedicated to exploring creativity uh, applied to educational, cultural, social, and organizational development. And what we're going to talk about today is creative leaders wanted, how to challenge the status quo at work. So um, let's get straight into it, Philippe. Uh, when you say creative leaders, what's the difference between creative leaders and what you would say is maybe non-creative leaders? <laughs> well, normally it's about uh, the way they think because when you are just a regular leader, let's say like this, and you are not thinking about doing things differently or at least uh, stimulating your team to, to think differently. So I think this is the, the main difference between a creative leader and a non-creative leader. But of course, the creative leader always focus on improvement and not just uh, growth and uh, financial growth, but also creating a good environment for the team. So this is the, the basis for the difference between them. Uh, so let's talk about that, about creating the environment. Uh, you talk about creative uh, ecosystems. Uh, well, how do you create an environment? How do you create an environment of creativity? That's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of creative words in there. Well, normally you have two elements that are, is pop up different from the others. And the first is trust. So without trust, we don't create. Because if you are not feeling comfortable to sharing your ideas with others, you don't share. And if you don't share, people don't get new ideas. So it's basically that. And the second one is feeling supported. So I need to feel that with the group I with, I with, uh, support my ideas and support my growth. So this is the basis for creating a good environment. Of course, you have different ele elements. I'm just resuming it, but basically it's, it's about this too. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And in order to be creative or, cre or create an environment for people to be creative, uh, you have to you have to create that actual space, right? Because if you're yes. always head down working, uh, and you don't have time to think or to you know explore or experiment, you know, then you will then you'll never really be creative. It's true. Normally we think that the more we work, the more good ideas we will have, but it's completely the opposite. We need to rest, to give time to to our brain to to find the the pathways between our neurons and ideas to come up with something different. And of course, if you, if you are just working with your, your, your environment, just your common group, you don't get, uh, get different ideas from other areas, other domains, because you are stuck just doing what you always do, only your, in your specialty. So you need to go out to another different uh, special, specialties to come up with new ideas, because you can have a hint or, or a tip from a different spe specialty that only you can see because you are in your spe specialty. But without this uh, outside going, uh, you don't come up with different ideas. Yeah, and it's interesting because often uh, people make the mistake of being creative, as you said, or, or brainstorming or whatever, but just within their group and then not looking at like what the impacts are, or as you say, like bringing in other people who can you know, enhance the thinking or broaden yeah. the, the spectrum. So we, sometimes we tend to, you know, we, st we still, I think, tend to be kind of a, a little bit silo mentality, even when yes. it comes to something like creativity. Yes, you have an amazing book from David Epstein. He, he brought this idea exactly, uh, how to be a generalist in a world of specialized of specialized people so basically we are focused and narrowing our knowledge when we just need to do the opposite we need to go general not just of course sometimes we need to specialize in something it's it's natural for us but without losing this open-minded to other things so maybe a hobby you have could give you a hint or a tip for a different 
a different idea or different solution for what you're looking for. So being a gener generalist, a generalist, it's good for us, really. And of course, like you said, if you are working with the same group all the time, you don't, ha you already know all the, the, all the answers they have. So you need to step up. You need to step out too. Mm -hmm. So explain to me then the concept of uh, creative ecosystems. Basically, you have a group, you know, what I call the community, but it's the same. So it, independent of the, the size of this community, this group, you, you are there. But in, in the ecosystem, you have different groups for different people where working in a, in a, common, a common goal normally. So you have to, to find a solution for something, for example. So uh, when you, you go out of your community, you step up and uh, inter interact with different communities, different groups, you, you know different people. And inside this community, you generate ideas, you generate knowledge. And we are all some kind of curators. So when I'm talking here with you, I'm saying, all I know, I know, I learn with my community and I'm sharing this to your community. So we are creating here an ecosystem somehow because I presenting a new knowledge for your community and the same uh, as you, you are int introducing, mm -hmm. introducing new knowledge for me and I will share this with my community. So we are getting to know each other and this share, this, this uh, knowledge we are creating here a connection between creativity and, and sales and pipeliners, uh, it's rich because we are creating new knowledge. And these people who don't know me and my community who don't know you could start to follow you and your people will start following me. And we are creating a huge community, a bigger community to share more knowledge. So this is the basis of a creative tech system. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. And um, talk to me a little bit about too about think different, you know, the thinking styles. Because when you do bring a group together, it everybody doesn't think and operate in the same way, right? Uh, depends, because normally when we work with the the same group for a, a long period of time, we we have what we call group think. So people start to always agreeing with each other because they already worked together for a long time. So this is bad, really. So the good thing is the, the common uh, agreement to do, uh, to, sh to have more ideas and new ideas is to, uh, in a different period of time, change people. So get new people in and some people out to, to mix up a little bit uh, new ideas. You don't have to change the whole group, of right. course but uh, a few people it's good and diversity it's always a good thing because uh, if you always uh, talk with the same people the same background the same culture normally you don't have new ideas but when you have an international group for example different cultures you have different perspectives different different ways to see things so this is great for uh, breaking the group thing no, no, absolutely, absolutely. And I think sometimes too is, um, is you need to, you know, different people are good at different, sometimes different parts of the creative process, right? And, and then obviously you have the creative process, but then you have the operational people who then can actually make it, uh, you know, become real, if you like. Um, those are important things too, because it's always important, isn't it, to have some, you know, more tactical operational people in the mix with the creative people. So you're actually f figuring out how to take the ideas and, and actu actualize them. Yeah, it's true. We have different roles for the whole process. And each one of us have a, a role to, we are bad at. Of course, I can do a different role, not just what I'm good at. But um, if you if you know what you're good at, and you you contribute this way for the group, it's good because um, we when we understand what we, we are good at, we can contribute more. And of course, we can challenge ourselves to to do different things just to see how it happens. And if we have the support and trust, I said earlier. But uh, I need to have this support to try new things. And, um, but these roles is very important because 
uh, I think we have like two types of people, like we used to say. And mm -hmm. one is the dreamers, the, the visionaries who see the things we don't see. And on the other hand, we have the, the doers, the makers who get this dream and make it happen. And, and both need each other. So only a dreamer don't, don't work and only makers don't change. So we need both. No, no, absolutely. And I think that's a that's a key thing uh, that organizations need to consider. Uh, and then how do you balance? I mean, because sometimes a pendulum can go too far where people are constantly coming up with new ideas and new ideas and all of that, which is great. But at some stage, you have to actually place a bet on some of them and take them into into production, if you like. And that can be that can be difficult sometimes because then creative people feel like they're being stifled, but they're not really being stifled because you're being practical. Yeah, it, this is tricky to be to be honest, because depending on the situation, of course, but in a general view, uh, we need to, the good enough. So we need to yeah. see how the resources we have, the time we have to do it and say and and and, uh, and one time said, OK, this is what we're betting on. This is what we're going to do and happen, whatever. Uh, we need to do something because we have time, we have resources and they are running out. So you have to choose. And this is, could be a, a difficult decision, especially for leaders uh, to, to say, because depending on the situation, of course, uh, we don't know what is going to happen. We don't know the future. We, we can't predict uh, what is going to happen. So we have to take risks. And the leader, it's the 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 person more responsible if their their risk is, is not uh, uh, it's bad the situations go wrong somehow so you have to be the courage have the courage to make these hard decisions yeah because because sometimes uh if you have perfectionists in the mix you know that can be difficult because you know perfect because uh as you said earlier sometimes you got to go with the good like don't let you know perfect be the enemy of the good yeah. um and bringing out something maybe when it's 80 percent, that's good enough because the last 20 percent wouldn't actually make that much impact for the customer or whatever it is but that can be difficult managing perfectionists and uh, if you have perfectionists in a team that can be a difficult thing to manage because in some ways perfectionism allows you to never really deliver anything because there's always yeah. going to be something else it's true. Normally, it's good to have a perfectionist in the team, but mm -hmm. one or two, depending on the, the size of the team, but not everybody, of course, and especially not the leader, because yeah. leaders have to make decisions, have to go, make, move things forward. And the leaders don't have to, to actually do something in the, the practical way. They have to support the group to do it. So this is the, the most important thing the leader have to do. It's motivate their team to do this stuff uh, and support them and coach them to be the better versions of themselves, you know, how we normally said. But the perfection it is good because they see the, the little details we don't see normally, but it's good to have other people who just push mm -hmm. things forward and said, okay, okay, it's enough, it's enough, it's enough, because we don't, we need to move forward. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. So what, what are some of the, in an ideal creative team, what what types of people and what types of, you know, thinking styles or personality and what, what makes an ideal team from your point of view? Well, this is a good question, actually, because um, normally we divide the creative process in four, four steps. The first is to, to research, I think is the, the basis. So we need people who are curious to dig up things and see what other things are doing or being doing or what we've been done before. So we need researchers somehow. I don't say academic researchers, but sure. researchers, curious people. Uh, the second is the people who generate ideas could easily imagine different scenarios, imagine different ways to do it and how to combine or create analogies for these ideas already generate for the researchers. The third is the maker, the doers, the people who take this and make it happen, make, see what it goes, test a lot, experiment, see what, what happens. If you have the space for it, of course. Normally we have, but it's not the, the perfect scenario. And the last, we have communicators. So of course, everybody 
needs a, a little bit of good communication, but normally we have people not just to sell the idea, of course, but to present somehow and be a kind of a, a mentor, a teacher to, who can explain things easily without losing any con content in the way. So I think these four whole roles, four types of people are essential for any creative team. And and the other the other challenge in in uh, in being creative is that is is making it simple too. Uh, it's like because we're very good, we can be very creative and make create very complex things because we love to you know we love to create ex, you know we go oh but what if this happens and what if that happens and we create these huge complex keeping it trying to keep it simple and implementable that can be the biggest challenge with the creative team. Yes, definitely. Because uh, creativity, we can define creativity. Of course, we have uh, different uh, views of creativity and depending on the area or domain we are talking about. These words can change, but normally it's two main words we use to describe creativity. The first is the new, the novelty. So somehow something that's not there before or not in the same, the, the same way could be, uh, okay, if I decompose this idea, it's already known, but all this together in the same place, it's new. And the second one, it's the meaningful or the useful, depending on the area. I like the meaningful because uh, we talk about people. And mm. for me, of course, we like to say that uh, the personal creativity, it's, it's good. We need to develop our own creativity. But I like to, to look to creativity as a social aspect because we, are, we need to interaction between us, we have to share these ideas. So I think the meaningful, it's uh, something important for creativity. And creating this meaning is the key for the creative process. Because if everybody see that thing you create or that process or that uh, service or product you create, it's a meaningful thing for them, they will adopt it. So creating meaning, I think it's the most important thing to do in this process. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point, uh, Philip, uh, because, uh, you know, meaning, because at the end of the day, everybody has to, if you like, coalesce and, uh, around the the idea. And then obviously, as you said, you know, you got to sell the idea to the broader group and, and, and that. So I think that's a that's a very in, insightful, insightful point. Um, so in the last couple of minutes, what, what else would you like to share with our viewers around around creativity? Because I feel like sometimes people get very stifled, as we said at the beginning, because they get their head so down in their business that they can't, they can't free up their minds to be creative. Yeah, I think one thing very important, and it's my forthcoming book, uh, it's about understanding the movement we are seeing in the world. And I'm saying the, the globally, but sure. everyone is feeling this change. And this change is about networks. So you have to connect with people who have to to be there to be known and to share but not just in the in a commercial way i said just not to make profit but really to be there for people to share ideas to exchange this knowledge is in this collective intelligence if you prefer because this is the the huge part of being human to the share the connection the social part so Understanding this movement for uh, the making, the makers culture, the creative economy culture to the network culture is a huge thing now. And we are moving to, to there. Of course, this, this movement is already happening. It's not something that starts now or this year or last year. It's already been happening the last like 10 years or more. But we are not being there exactly. We are not uh, accepting this new new normal, if you prefer, uh, about the networks, the network uh, culture we have. So connect with people, be there for them, uh, share your ideas, uh, ask for help. It's not a problem to ask for help. And of course, you, you don't need to be in the you know, in a bad situation to ask for help. It's just, oh, what do you think about it? What do you think about this idea I have? Or what, if, what do you think about this new product I'm thinking to, to launch? So it's okay to ask for people help. And these people helping you, they will feel to be part of it. 
So I, I somehow I help you to making this happen. So I will treat this. I will like this. I I will see meaning on this because I somehow help you to make it happen. So connecting with people to be social, it's the most important thing we have to do now. Yeah, no, absolutely. And obviously, and the great thing now is you can create teams that are made up of people from across the world. It's very easy to do. You can you know, collaborate together. I mean, the, the, the technology allows us to do that. So that has expanded again, the, uh, the ability to, to connect and network, like you said. Yeah, and I can point you to some research I've been doing, uh, an academic research mm -hmm. that say that groups, uh, papers and ideas made, in, make, made in by, by groups are the most successful ones. So we are losing the idea of this, the solitary genius we had. And we see groups are our best chance, our, our better, best, our best force to create something, any, anything. So mm -hmm. groups are connecting, uh, uh, the culture of connecting and networks are the best shot for us from now on. Okay, listen, fantastic. Listen, thanks, uh, thanks, Felipe. And uh, you, you're not the first guest we've had on from Portugal, but you are the first Brazilian we've had on the show. So oh, there's a first a for you. <laughs> yeah, this has been fantastic. All of uh, Felipe's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and, and when your book's coming out. Well, my book will be soon and uh, crowdsourcing uh, uh, platform. So uh, I ask him for help exactly to people to to know how this uh, could could work. And of course, I count in uh, with everybody to see the book and, and look what uh, if it, it's interesting and if they like the cover and the content, of course, and collaborate if they want. But uh, I like to I, I create my life uh, in creativity. So since early age, I was passionate about it and how people came up with these ideas of until now I research the history of the any creators or any so-called creative genius and see how they came up with their their ideas and I see it's everybody else it's like everybody else they just persist a little bit they connect with with people and they came up with this, their ideas so this is fascinating for me and I try to to show people how to do it and that is possible and um, in very different ways you don't have like one or two or three different processes you have to to adopt to be creative or, or whatever you have you can create your own process you can understand how you you work and use this in your favor to create new ideas so it's a self-knowledge process but also a social process to to be creative so uh, i hope that people who, who know my work and if you follow, start following me, you can see that for yourself. And of course, could be more creative. Yeah, listen, I would encourage you go go check it out. And uh, as you said, it's crowdsourcing ideas and stuff. So let's uh, give your chance to, to join in. Uh, listen again, Philippe, thank you so much for today. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again very soon.